For quite a while, people have envisioned what life might resemble in different universes. On account of the James Webb Space Telescope, the most remarkable telescope in existence, that question can at last be investigated while noticing the nearest star system to us, Proxima Centauri, which is just four light years away. Researchers have seen a few exceptional oddities from one of the planets in the system, Proxima b. These irregularities, called artificial lights, have confounded the best minds in established research. But what are they? Do these lights suggest the presence of intelligent life on the planet? Join us as we explore the James Webb's unnerving revelation of city lights that could change everything. The only life that we are currently aware of is on Earth. Starting from the beginning of civilization, individuals have questioned whether there is life elsewhere in the universe. To conduct such an interstellar search, American cosmologists Jill Tarter and Thomas Pearson launched the Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence, SETI, project in 1984. The charity's goal is to assemble space-borne radio transmissions. Radio waves can travel farther and are hence more likely to be detected by the 42 radio telescopes that make up the extraordinary Allen Telescope Array in the Californian Sierra Nevada mountains. However, in the past 30 years, no undeniable extraterrestrial transmission has been found. Following that, the James Webb Space Telescope's successful launch bolstered the quest to examine a range of unseen planets circling distant stars. As the largest telescope on the planet, Drifting approximately 1 million miles from Earth and equipped with exceptionally sensitive detectors, it has the potential to uncover significant discoveries. Years ago, there were no known planets outside our solar system. But since then, more than 4,000 exoplanets have been found orbiting different stars. According to NASA, the universe might contain trillions of exoplanets. The earliest indications of something going on beneath the surface of our solar system might be found in extraterrestrial vegetation. The Galileo spacecraft, on its way to Jupiter, turned its instruments back toward Earth and found an unequivocal sign of the presence of plants, the vegetation red edge, Viari, biosignature, a blend of red and infrared lights reflected by plants. For example, a planet like Earth covered in a jungle, should have a strong and easily distinguishable VRE signal. The JWST will measure the VRE of faraway Earth-like planets in the habitable zone around stars, which could provide significant indications of something going on beneath the surface in the exoplanet atmosphere. When sunlight crosses a planet star, the JWST might be able to detect it as it enters its atmosphere. The missing frequencies would then be found through spectroscopy as atoms and molecules in the atmosphere absorb specific frequencies, creating a characteristic unique fingerprint that the JWST can recognize. This method might be used to determine the composition of the atmosphere and whether life is possible. Life could exist on Earth-sized planets with climates like our own, characterized by a predominance of oxygen, nitrogen, and carbon dioxide. By searching for elements that aren't normally present, one might be able to detect technological life. For instance, chlorofluorocarbons, CFCs, produced for use in refrigeration and cleaning products, would likely be detectable to outsiders monitoring Earth's atmosphere from afar. If the JWST found CFCs in planetary atmospheres, that would be a clear sign of civilization. However, life on exoplanets may not resemble life on Earth at all. Sometimes, even natural living things like extremophiles, species that can survive in conditions where other living things would die, can appear alien. This group of creatures, primarily microbes, can endure extreme conditions, such as heat up to 250 degrees Fahrenheit or strong acid with pH levels under 3. Since planets like Earth are more likely to support life than those with extreme temperatures or acidic conditions, it may be wise to start with those first. Prime candidates could have temperatures that allow liquid water to exist on their surfaces and orbit a stable star. Our sun is classified as a yellow G-type star. These stars are rarer and often have shorter lifespans. However, in our universe, the likelihood of studying planets orbiting red dwarf stars, which are more common and have lower luminosities and temperatures than the sun, is higher. This longer time span allows for the development of life and evolution to produce complex life forms. About 40 light years from Earth, the TRAPPIST-1 planetary system will be the subject of JWST's first mission. 
It orbits a quiet red dwarf star with seven Earth-sized rocky planets. Three of these rocky planets, situated in the so-called habitable zone, could have liquid water on their surfaces. Despite its smaller and colder mass compared to our Sun, the Trappist, one star emits light that is suitable for Earth-like conditions due to the close orbit of its planets. The most obvious opportunity for humans to see city lights outside the solar system is Proxima Centauri, a red dwarf star that is 4.25 light years from the Sun. Proxima is multiple times fainter than the Sun, so a planet must be multiple times closer to it than Earth is to the Sun to support life, based on liquid water. In August 2016, astronomers discovered a planet with 1.3 Earth masses in this habitable zone, a Goldilocks-like zone where the light intensity is just right to melt water. Proxima b orbits Proxima Centauri, but it is conceivable that Proxima b is an airless, dead planet, given that it orbits its red dwarf star at a distance of just 4.6 million miles. This close orbit exposes it to strong solar winds that can completely strip away its atmosphere. However, Proxima b receives enough sunlight for temperatures and liquid water to be similar to those on Earth because of its proximity to the star. Proxima b is thought to be tidally locked, always showing the same side to the star, much like the moon does relative to Earth. Proxima Centauri is about 18% the mass of the Sun and emits significantly less light than one might expect for a planet so close to its star, only 5% of the solar irradiance. It might seem like a super hot ash. Liquid water could exist on Proxima b as long as the planet has an atmosphere to retain heat since the total energy arriving from the Sun is only 65% of what Earth receives. However, the planet is not particularly hospitable to life. It is likely tidally locked, meaning it always faces the same direction toward the star, creating permanent day and night with huge temperature variations. The planet also receives 100 times more high-energy radiation than Earth does, including X-rays and ultraviolet light, because of its proximity to Proxima Centauri. Proxima b is also bombarded with high-energy particles during stellar flares. Unless it has a protective magnetic field like Earth's, the conditions for life may not be favorable. Certain reasonable conditions might actually make Proxima b a more appealing world. Unfortunately, models suggest that the atmospheres of tidally locked planets might be vulnerable to rapid collapse due to the freezing out of volatile gases on the night side. Earth's atmosphere can be replenished by volcanic activity, and for planets with strong magnetic fields, this atmosphere is less likely to escape. Since we know nothing about Proxima b's volcanic activity or magnetic field strength, we cannot determine whether the planet has an atmosphere. However, since an atmosphere implies the presence of oceans, and the two together imply the presence of life, we are eager to find out if Proxima b has a modern civilization. It could have solar panels covering the day side to generate power to light and warm the night side, which would otherwise be too cold and dark for comfortable habitation. The discovery of Proxima b has triggered a race to determine whether it crosses its star's face, as seen from Earth. These transits would allow researchers to determine the planet's size and mass, which would enable them to assess its density and validate the planet's rocky composition, providing information about the materials used to create those rocks. During a transit, starlight could reveal the nature of the planet by passing through its atmosphere. However, the probability that the orbit will be in the right alignment for researchers to observe a transit is only 1.5%. The star's tendency to flare also complicates matters. Cosmologist David Kipping of Columbia University says the star is unstable as stellar heat causes a rocky planet to absorb light and re-radiate it as infrared light. However, rocky planets produce a distinct type of infrared radiation from stars like Proxima Centauri. Furthermore, the James Webb Space Telescope was designed specifically to study infrared light. Proxima b's infrared thermal signature is key to identifying the planet's atmosphere. Additionally, the infrared portion of the spectrum has a strong advantage over Hubble's replacement, which might allow the JWST to detect city lights on Proxima's night side, even if they are as faint as those currently used on Earth. The JWST could detect artificial illumination as long as it is constrained to a frequency band that is several times narrower than the star's light. 
Proxima B's day side might be heavily covered with solar panels reflecting starlight, as Proxima B orbits its star day in and day out. The temperatures between day and night, however, depend on whether the planet is composed entirely of bare rock, atmosphere, and ocean, both of which retain heat. If there isn't an atmosphere, Proxima B's day and night side temperatures will vary more. In fact, since the day side will emit all of the energy it receives from Proxima Centauri as a black body, we can calculate the exact amount of black body radiation that should be present. The night side, on the other hand, would appear to be a frozen wasteland. If you need any adjustments or further editing, let me know the temperature difference between the day and night sides of Proxima B would largely depend on its atmospheric conditions. If the planet has a substantial atmosphere, it could help distribute heat more evenly, potentially allowing for more stable temperatures. However, without an atmosphere, the night side would become extremely cold, while the day side might experience intense heat. The discovery of atmospheric components, such as water vapor or carbon dioxide, could indicate whether conditions are suitable for life. Instruments on the JWST could analyze the light passing through the atmosphere during transits, looking for signatures of gases that are typically associated with biological processes. In addition to searching for signs of life, researchers are also interested in the geological activity of Proxima b. Active geology could play a crucial role in maintaining an atmosphere by recycling gases and providing essential elements for life. If Proxima b is volcanically active, it might have a more dynamic atmosphere than previously thought. The possibility of life on Proxima b raises intriguing questions about the nature of extraterrestrial civilizations. If intelligent life exists there, what form might it take? Would it be similar to life on Earth, or could it be completely alien, adapted to the harsh conditions of its environment? Furthermore, the search for extraterrestrial intelligence doesn't end with Proxima b. The JWST's capabilities will allow astronomers to explore other exoplanets in the habitable zones of distant stars, expanding our understanding of potential life-supporting environments. Each discovery brings us closer to answering one of humanity's most profound questions. Are we alone in the universe? As technology advances and our observational tools improve, the next few years promise exciting revelations about the cosmos. The exploration of Proxima b and other exoplanets may ultimately lead to groundbreaking discoveries that reshape our understanding of life beyond Earth. The implications of finding even microbial life on another planet would be monumental, challenging our perspectives on biology, evolution, and our place in the universe. The hunt for life in the cosmos is not just a scientific endeavor, it is a journey into our own origins and the future of humanity. As we continue to look up at the stars, we carry with us the hope of discovering that we are part of something much larger than ourselves. Whether we find evidence of advanced civilizations or simple life forms, each step in this quest adds to the tapestry of knowledge that defines our existence and drives us to explore further into the unknown.